I've been thinking about irony again. I've been thinking about I've been thinking about Charlie Sheen. I've been thinking about you know myself. I've been thinking about integrity. I've been thinking about this idea of ironic detachment, how much that word gets thrown around. It sort of annoys me. The thing that kind of threw me for a loop or that got me thinking about this, I was in in Atlanta. And when you're in Atlanta, you know, there's all this, uh, everyone wants you to go to this Claremont Lounge. Now, I didn't go because of my assumptions. That's fine. I wasn't condescending. I just didn't want to deal with that. I don't like dealing with crowds. Uh, I, I don't drink. And I, you know, there was part of me that did not want to see these uh, beat up old strippers doing their thing. Now, someone said to me on Twitter or in person, I can't remember, is there a difference anymore, folks? Is there, someone said to me, uh, it's ironic. Now, now, what does that mean? What does it mean that it's ironic? It's, is it ironic? Is the place ironic? Is your being there ironic? Are you looking at it ironically? What does ironic mean? Does that mean that you're using the word ironic to detach from something that is pathetic and mock it or condescend it or laugh at it? Is that what ironic mean? Is that, is that your disposition? Is that your excuse for not committing to your emotional reaction to it? Is an ironic disposition another form of cowardice that you just enables you to repress your emotions or not have them or do whatever you think the rest of the people are doing? I'm sick of this fucking irony shit. I'll tell you, man, because in a situation like that, if you're saying it's ironic, does that mean the strippers are in on it? Are they are they all old and backstage and beat up and saying to each other, hey, isn't this great? We're really turning stripping in on itself. We're deconstructing it. We're presenting it in a different way. Our very existence is mocking the reality of what people expect from strippers in the day and age we live in now. I'm so glad we are so clever. Do you think that's really the conversation going on backstage or they just have happy that people are coming and throwing money at them for whatever reason they may be throwing money at them. I tell you, man, in some situations, if you think you have ironic detachment, you're actually more depraved than the guys who are going there to actually get some prurient excitement, some sexual satisfaction. If you're there to say like, oh man, this is so fucked up. Oh dude, look at her. She's so old. Oh, this is so fucking sad, man. This is excellent. Hey, get me a shot of Jaeger. You're more depraved than the guy going, oh, yeah, come here, bring bring those wrinkly old things over here. I, I just love it. I just love it. You're more depraved than that guy because you are disingenuous. You are dishonest. Your ironic detachment makes you half a person, makes you lack a self, makes you a coward. I mean, I just think about this because there was a time, and I, I think I've talked about some of this before, where, you know, the great philosophical question used to be, you know, what is the meaning of life? And now the great philosophical question is, how am I being used and am I okay with that? What am I willing to sacrifice my sense of self for, my, my sense of well-being, my sense of integrity? How much money is that worth? I mean, is it ironic to be at a job that you know you hate, but because you're overqualified or you have no choice and that you're very aware that you know you could be doing better things or bigger things that as you sit with that feeling that you are taking an ironic position and that makes you feel better is that is that real irony or is that just sad how long does that go on for before you realize like yeah, this isn't worth it you know I'm compromising my integrity I'm killing part of my soul here that's not ironic that's tragic I'm not an ironic person I'm a tragic person because I'm not willing to take the steps necessary to fulfill the dreams that I have, to, to, to make myself a person of integrity. Look, I've, I've, everybody has sold out a bit at some point in their life. Everyone's taken chances. Everyone's uh, done what they had to do. You got to do what you have to do. But either you live with that and you, you honestly own it that this is what I'm doing, or you sit there for your whole life thinking like, well, I could be doing anything. I could be doing something better. I could be some, doing something more creative. You know, I'm better than this job it's just like, you know, I'm getting paid good. Now, when was that? When did that become not selling out? When did that not become a compromise? When did the cleverness and creativity of the commercial, you know, transcend the fact that it is a commercial? When did that happen? When did everything become a level playing field in terms of, you know, what has integrity and what doesn't? But everybody's got these problems. And at some point, you know, at some point, you've got to make a stand for yourself. At some point, you got to realize, like, I did compromise my integrity. Do I want it back or do I live with this? It's just interesting. I've been thinking a little bit more about the Charlie Sheen thing 
for reasons that I'll, I'll get to, you know, I'll, I'll talk about later. But just in terms of the fact that no matter what level of success you are at, you know, when one snaps for what, whatever reason, you know, there's a freedom in that snapping. There's an explosive expression, you know, of poetry and rage and insanity that is probably the most honest anyone's going to be in their life. When are you going to have your explosive rage and poetry about just the condition of your life? Where is that moment of freedom for you? And do you have it? Do you think about it? Do you fantasize about it? And can you ever transcend whatever compromises you made in your life to compress your soul into the coal that it is. I mean, the enemy of irony is having the courage to love something or like something or trust your own opinion and not be part of the united front of condescension, of fear, of of actually having feelings about something that may be tragic or pathetic or dated or not your thing. Go find your thing. Don't go back in time or go into sordid little holes where you can sit there and pretend like you're above it all, like you're pompous, like you are better than, like you are representatives of the empire. Did you read that article by Brett Easton Ellis about Charlie Sheen on post-empire, the difference between empire and post-empire and cultural thinking? It's a fascinating little uh, essay. It's very interesting. I don't know where it's leading. I don't know what this post-empire culture uh, uh, world that we're living in on an entertainment level is, is going to be what it's going to mean to civilization. But man, we want it all on the table. The more menacing the truth, the better it feels to witness.